Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Sayyidina wa Maulana Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Salawatu Allahi wa salamuhu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawalahum bi ihsani la middin. Wa bada salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My respected listeners and watchers, this is the fourth uh, clip which is discussing about the misconceptions uh, which people are attached to Islam. In the last clip, we told you about the battle of Uhud, which was fought in the third year of Hijra, and we debunked, we debunked the assertion that Islam was not spread uh, by sword. The Prophet Sallallahu did not fight anybody just to spread the, uh, the religion of Islam. In other words, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not fight anybody on account of his religion. And that is why as we are going on after discussing the battles of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will come to a chapter that will discuss who is an enemy according to the Islamic injections. Who is an enemy? Is he a non-Muslim or who is he? Inshallah, if you follow us, eh, you will see who is an enemy in the context of Islam. Today we shall be looking at the battle of Khandak, the battle of uh, Trench, or the battle of Ditch, which was fought in the fifth year of Hijra. This battle was fought in Medina. Eh, I can say it, not even far away from Medina, inside Medina, or let me say it, in the borders of Medina. If you could remember, that is why it is titled the Battle of Trench. A trench or a ditch was dug around the Medina in order to deny the, non, the, the, the enemies uh, access uh, to, uh, to, to, to the Medina. Because they came in mass, the Jews of Bunok Banu Koreza uh, collaborated with the Mushrikun of Makkah, the Minkans, and the aim of them coming in the 50 and the 50 of Hijra is to come and destroy Islam and kill the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is, this is to tell you even from the beginning that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not meet anybody from among these Quraysh uh, up to this time around in their destination. They were all coming to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his destination. This time around they came very close uh, to the Medina. And that was why the Prophet Sallallahu instructed the companions uh, to dunk uh, a ditch around Medina so that they would not be able uh, to enter into the city of Medina to destroy it or to kill anybody. This battle was fought in the 50th of Hijra, as we said. The Mushrikun of Mecca, or Mecca, eh, of, uh, of Mecca collaborated with the Jews of Banu Qureza. These Jews of Banu Qureza eh, betrayed the treaty which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made with them when he arrived in Medina. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived in Medina, he made treaty with the Jews of Banu Qureza, the Jews of Banu Kainaka, and the Jews of Banu Nabir, the, Mushri, the remaining Mushrikun in, in, in Medina by then, and even the minor minority Christians in Medina, and even uh, those people who were inhabiting the, the city of Medina by then. The Prophet Asalama gathered them, and they wrote agreements or treaties. Uh, about 50 treaties were written uh, between them and the Prophet Asalam. One of these treaties was they themselves, who were in Medina, or who were uh, sitting in Medina by then, will not fight one another. A Banu Koreza will not fight Banu Nadir, and Banu Nadir will not fight Banu Kainaka. Neither of any of the Jews or any of the clans of the Jews will fight Muslims, or neither Muslims will fight any of the Jews. Meaning, anybody or any clan that is living in the community of Medina by then, will not fight themselves that is the, that is one of the treaties another thing in the treaty is that they will not assist any outsider eh, who comes to fight eh, any of the 
inhabitant of Medina. Instead, if that person who is living in Medina or that community, sorry, that clan who is living in Medina, uh, seek, the, seek the assistance of the remaining people, they will assist him to fight this outsider. This is just little uh, part of the agreement which they had with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the Prophet arrived in Medina. This is to tell you also before we go down to the bottle of Khandak that the Prophet Sallallahu was a man of peace. If not, what will lead him to gather these people who are not practicing the religion of Islam? And he made treaty with them just to live in peace with everybody, not in pieces. But the enemies of Islam didn't want the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions eh, to live in peace. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam must defend uh, the territory of Islam and the Muslims entirely. So the Jews, Jews of Banu Qurayza betrayed this treaty and they collaborated with the, uh, with the Mushrikun of Makkah. They collaborated with the Mushrikun of Makkah and they came secretly. They entered into uh, their route and they, what do you call it, uh, ring the Medina. When the Prophet Sallallahu heard about their coming, he called his companions and they resolved that uh, a trench should be uh, should be dig around the Medina so that they will not have access inside the Medina. Now, who caused this battle? And where is the ideology of spreading Islam by such? Up to now, these people are coming to Medina to destroy the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And some people ignorantly are asserting that uh, Islam was spread by sword. Islam was spread by sword in what wise? Why is the spread of Islam in these three battles we have mentioned? The battle of Uhud, sorry, the battle of Badr, the battle of Uhud, and the battle of Khandak. Where is the spread of Islam and these battles? I can just resolve to say that uh, these three battles we have mentioned were fought, to, were fought just to counter Islam and to destroy Islam not the spread of Islam. The Prophet Islam didn't kill anybody in account of your own, account of his religion. So I believe that that ideology of the of Islam was spread by sword is not a, a welcome idea. In fact, it doesn't exist in Islam at all because Islam has it written in the Quran that La ikraha fi din, there is no compulsion in this religion. Nobody should be forced to practice Islam. With this, I will stop here. We meet in the fifth clip, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our mistakes and may Allah reward us abundantly anywhere we say correctly. Subhanaka Allahumma alhamdulillah ilaha 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 See you in the next clip, inshallah.